Hey everybody, Thrift Store Hacker back again, and uh, we're continuing with the uh, gas motor project. Uh, this is, uh, I guess we can put this video on the uh, side list of alternative fuels, because uh, I've been reading a lot on the internet, you know, uh, you can split water into hydrogen and oxygen, make HHO gas, which uh, it's a pretty volatile gas because it's hydrogen, you're going to run the car on hydrogen or run the motor here on hydrogen, but uh, you can make it at home, and it's not really that hard to do, honestly. What you need for the project um, is you're going to need some washers. I got these big, fat washers. Um, I cleaned them up a bit. They were secondhand and really gross. Um, you're going to need five of these large washers, and then you're going to need spacers to go in between them. And I think this is like, a, I don't know, I'd say an eighth of an inch spacer. And one of these washers, you're going to take a rotary tool or a saw and you're going to cut a notch in it. What this notch is going to do is it's going to connect up to this spade connector right here. So we can get a positive charge to this uh, washer. Now the way this works is you'll have the outside washers with a negative charge on them. And then you're going to have two washers spaced out on the inside, which are neutral. So they're not going to have any electrical charge going through them. They're just there to kind of buffet the charge going between the positive electrode, which will be here in the center, and the negative electrodes on the outside. And the electrolysis effect in there generates bubbles, and those bubbles are hydrogen and oxygen gases separating due to the electrical charge. So, to set this up, what I did is I took a canning jar here, and we took the canning lid, and I put an air fitting on the end here. This is just a little air fitting off of like a, a drip irriga uh, irrigation system. Uh, I used some uh, liquid nails to make sure it was nice and sealed down here. And then on the other side, I ran two wires through a hose, and then I injected liquid nails in here to make it solid. And then, once again, just added probably more than I needed to on the outside here to uh, just make sure it's all airtight. And with my two wires coming off up here, I got a positive and a negative lead. And the negative lead is going to go right to the end of the uh, this bolt here. I put a washer on the end of it, so when I tighten this down, this washer is going to push on that wire and trap it between the head of the bolt and the uh, washer, so it gets a really good connection. And we're going to put one of our washers on. That's our first negative washer right there, so they'll have a negative charge. And we're going to wrap a little tape around here because we don't want the three in the middle to catch a negative charge. So this will be our insulator right here. We'll put our spacer in and we'll put our next washer on. As you can see that uh, can't touch metal. It's all nice and insulated there. And then we're going to put another spacer on. And we're going to take, try to take our notched washer, which is our positive, and put that right there in the middle. Put another spacer on. As you can still see here, it is completely insulated from the negative. We'll put our spacer in, put our next washer on, spacer, next washer. All right. Whoa. Put a washer on the end here. Once again, it was a little scummy, so I uh, just hit it with a sander really quick, the little sanding thing on my rotary tool. And we'll just screw this down here. Let me grab my ratchet and my wrench here and 
just going to tighten this down. It doesn't need to be super tight, it just needs to be snug. Let's loosen that up. I'm going to try to get these plates as straight as I can. I don't think it's going to affect anything except for aesthetics, but it makes me happy. See, the washer's a little bit bigger than the uh, bolt they ride on, so they're, they just kind of float on there. But we can keep them straight when we put a compression force on them by tightening the bolt here. I'll grab another one of my sockets. I want to do just a quick show of this uh, tool I got here. Uh, this is a Stanley, uh, I think it's a 3 8 inch ratchet. And it's a pretty heavy, well-built ratchet. But the coolest function, and my buddy came over with this, and I had to have one. But the coolest function is when you have it set to turn a certain direction, and you turn the handle... We'll see back here. You turn the handle, it turns. But if you notice, I can turn the handle both ways. And it goes the same direction. This is really great when you're down in a car somewhere in a machine and you can't quite reach it. Um, I don't get paid for advertisements. I just really, really like this ratchet. Um... The only downer with it is it's a little big right here because it has the, the mechanism for this and all that in there. So you'll need to carry a standard ratchet in your box, but this will get you out of uh, some tight situations. Okay, moving on. Now that we have everything hooked up here, we'll attach our positive electrode to that notch that we put in here. There we go. And if you look in there, you can see there's a good, still a good gap between the uh, the two plates on the side of it. They're neutral plates, but it's always good, you know, just try to keep as much of a gap as you can there. Uh, another thing, you're going to want to use like a stainless steel wire of some sort on this, because if you don't use stainless steel, it's going to basically rust all the way up the wire, and if it's copper wire, it'll be all nice and blue on the end. Uh, I know I have some copper wire in here, but this was just kind of hacked together really quick. Okay, now that we have that all together, and it's reasonably uh, airtight up here, we're going to set that aside, and we're going to prepare the mixture of water we're going to put it in. Water by itself is not too horribly conductive. Uh, sure, there's impurities and stuff in it that make it more conductive, but uh, we need to make it a little bit more conductive. Um, a lot of the videos on YouTube, you'll see that instead of using a something like a green product and to get more production, they'll use something like stump remover, or as a potassium sulfate or something like that in it, which makes a way better reaction. But... Uh, I'm not sure how harmful of a chemical that is, but it's not around the house. It's not something that you would eat. So you know, why would you use it if you can use something else? So I'm going to use baking soda. It's America's number one trusted baking soda brand. Anywho, we're going to take about three spoonfuls of baking soda and add them to our water mixture here. I'm using a quart container, so this is uh, about three quarters of a quart, maybe two thirds of a quart. I think this should be more than enough. I'm going to stir that up there a bit. There we go. We can set our baking soda aside here. And we're going to take our cell. Just drop it in there. Uh, if you do this with a, you can do this without a glass container. I just like the glass container because I can see the bubbles. Might need a 
fiddle with your wires to get them to uh, sit in there the way you want the generator to sit in there. And then we have that, and we'll screw on our uh, lid here. Make sure that's nice and tight. And then let's grab ourselves a little brick battery. This thing's a trooper. It's got to be about four or five years old now. And we can take this right here. And I got some old clip leads that I can use here. And we'll connect one of these to the negative. Uh, let's see here. This one is the negative. Let's twist that up and clamp that beast on. And the other one to the positive. And as soon as I connect this, we should see some bubbles. Oh yeah. You guys ready for this? Check this out. I'll try to get this into the shop better. Look at all those bubbles, guys. And gals. Now look at that. All that, all those bubbles coming up right there. You see all the bubbles hitting the top right there? That is all hydrogen and oxygen gas. We're splitting them into the baking soda in there. It's just kind of helping the current go through it. Uh, I can tell by the way the uh, plates are... Uh, I'm going to disconnect this because I'm kind of in a small room. If this generates too much hydrogen, I could uh, get hurt. But... You can see how the plates already got a little bit of uh, baking soda on them. That's telling me I might have added too much baking soda. So we'll cut the mixture in half next time I mix this container. But now that we have a fuel delivery system, uh, I don't think this system itself is going to be big enough to uh, do what uh, I need it to do is continuously run this. But we could actually, this could be just a cell of the machine. We can make more cells of these. Let me scoot my camera back out here for you guys. There we go. So what we can do with this, and this will probably be the next video, is since we have a spout here, we can put a tube on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tube, I'm going to connect it to a balloon. And when I connect it to the balloon, the HHSO gas will come in here, it'll build up, it'll fill up the balloon. Then we can take that balloon, attach it, somehow at a distance because you don't want to have the balloon sitting around on the end of this short tube because the heat from the motor could set the hydrogen off and you get a loud bang fire department shows up it's just all bad it's a horrible day but what we could do is we'll take a long tube and we'll run it down probably about six ten feet away from the motor just for safety we'll put a valve in between the you know, this two uh, the uh, inlet here and the balloon that way we can control the flow. And what we'll do is we'll give it a little bit of hydrogen. It can get a little bit of extra air in from the inside of the carburetor there. And we can see if we can uh, get this thing spinning up on HHO gas. Uh, I have read that the HHO gas, uh, you'll need to play with the ignition timing. I guess it wants to be set, the ignition timing wants to be set later because it's so volatile it wants to fire early. Um, from what I've read, it's not going to hurt it too bad. Anyway, this is kind of a sacrificial motor. But uh, it's not going to hurt it too bad. It's just going to pop and backfire a bit. Another reason why we want the hydrogen source away from the motor. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it was a quick little build. And if you have any questions, let me know. Any comments, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, and we'll continue on this uh, tomorrow.